Welcome to Apostles on Fire TV. Here you'll be getting powerful video clips that will steer you up for a glorious work with God. Enjoy the video. Thank you. Now, I'm trying to make you think kingdom. We've been thinking like a man. Oh. The one that God recommends for chastisement, the one that's called A, he has greater potential. So let us give him more discipline. You can be loose, but the guy that's called A, he is bound. Oh, you're not here. His, his options are not many. He travels on a narrow path because he's called A. <laughs> Hallelujah. The guys are called F. They are just they are loose guys. <laughs> That's the kingdom way. You notice his hand on you is strong. People can get away with fornication, get away with stuff, get away with theft, get away, and still say, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Okay. But you cannot get away with it. Then you will discover that the regiment behind your own dealing is different from the popular regiment. Even if you begin to testify about your own dealing, people will say, are you, are you judging us? What's that? Ah, what's that? Hey, what's, what's, what's going on? Because they are, <laughs> God doesn't seem to care about their backsliding because he has one man that's called A. That's one man. You might be he might discover that in an entire generation, in your whole family, your whole clan, he might not be looking for the whole clan. He might just be looking for one that was called A and will accept to travel on the narrow path, inconveniencing path, so that God can deal with his confidences and, and render him naked of himself. Never compare yourself with the next person. Never. Uh, most of you don't know that if God wants to prepare you as a vessel of revelation, he will bring you into captivity. <laughs> I'm not talking Old Testament. I'm talking Apostle Paul. That's his story. He called himself a prisoner of Christ. It means that Christ put him in captivity so that he can have revelations. I will show you from the Bible. You want to move in revelations? Don't, don't say it too quickly. It might earn you captivity. You say, oh, I like that guy. He just flows in revelation. I, I'm coming from the prison house. I've been detained for long in the wilderness. That's where your appetite for immorality, they, they, will, they will freeze it. It will dry up. Your stomach for greed will be deflated. Oh. <laughs> you don't understand that. So that you can serve God. Because mammon has the capacity to stand in the office of God conveniently. No, you don't know that. It's Jesus that told us. You cannot serve God and mammon. A mammon is a convenient God. He can show up, you like him. Everybody likes him. Oh my God. So the mammon preacher doesn't receive attacks from the devil. Because he's built in Babylon. Meanwhile, in the new creation, the administration, the throne that manages that creation is the throne of the Christ. And everything looks to that throne for life. Everything. Just like the Israel had to look to Moses for every form of supply. If they wanted meat, they went to Moses. And Moses is not into animal husbandry. Oh, you're not. You're not. <laughs> they wanted water. They go to Moses. And I was not told that Moses read water resources engineering. And that was the shadow of the, of the Messianic. That a, a new creation was coming. That we look to the administrator, even the Christ, as the source and the sustainer and everything. So for, for many decades in the body of Christ, people presented things like money. You can make more money. There can be more houses. You can have more certificates. You can have more cars. And that looks like, so if you don't have cars to show and stuff to show and money to show, it seems you have a problem with God. Because the way we know God is that he shows himself by, that's a new doctrine. It's a digression. It sounds good to the ears, but if you know Christ, you will weep. Meanwhile, the order, the order of the Bible, don't think I'm trying to downplay the doctrine of prosperity. The order of the Bible is, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Become aligned with God and the resources that you need to prosecute his will for your life will navigate. You are not seeking the things, you are seeking him, seeking his kingdom, seeking to know his agenda, what he's doing in your generation. And the more you know, the more he will fund you. Prosperity is not the pursuit of the New Testament saint. It's, it's, it's a consequence of alignment. The story I told you about Apostle Paul while he was going to Asia. 
and then they were, he was pressed. The reason why the Holy Spirit could allow him to be pressed was because there was something the cross was judging. That this is not part, this your self-confidence is not part of the new creation. So we need, it, we need to administer what? Death. Are you there? Do you realize that the flesh does not like death? No, the flesh will fight. The flesh will protest. I can't die. And that's why it is the Holy Spirit that is committed with the responsibility of administering death. And the Holy Spirit is stronger than flesh. It's more ancient than flesh. That's why he's the only one that can handle flesh. Flesh is... Hey, I'm a whole. But you see, when the cross is out, we celebrate flesh. We accommodate it. We worship it. And all is flesh. There is no touch of life in it. So it is flesh that will want to make a man a superstar. I'm the guy. But the reason why you are anointed is not to be a superstar. Because we already have a superstar. His name is Jesus. We already have him. We already have. Yes, we already have one. The only reason why you were anointed and called is so that you can be a conduit through which grace can come to the least of us. So that the least among our numbers can become as strong as David. So it doesn't matter what mistake you made. You had four children before you, you gave your life to Christ. Don't worry. The one that administers our possibility is the spirit. He knows how to weave your mistakes. And then at the end of the day, if you allow him, he will give you beauty in the place of passion. He will give you the oil of joy in the place of mourning. He will give you the garment of praise in the place of the spirit of heaviness that you might be called trees of righteousness, the plantings of God that he might be glorified. If only you allow him to work out his protocol, that thing you call your mistake will be weaved into a pattern. That will shed light for generations. So it is not of him that will it. Neither is it of him that run it. If I decide not to serve Jesus today, he will bring someone by forge someone by his grace that is much better than I am. So it's a privilege to be with him. <laughs> yeah, because this is grace. What you are seeing. Just in case you are blessed, it is called, the, the currency is called grace. So if I now say, okay, I'm somebody, I'm, all right? He will put me aside. He won't kill me, he'll put me aside and raise, forge someone from our midst and administer to him much more grace and my name will be forgotten forever. The Lord, by an act of his authority, included us in Jesus Christ so that when he was punished, he was wounded. His wounds had a meaning to us. It was wounds on Jesus. But for us, it was a payment for our transgression. We were in him. Oh, you're not with me. It was, it was bruises on Jesus. But it was payment for our chastisement, for our peace. It, 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 it were stripes on Jesus. But it was a payment for our healing. Because you cannot understand your experience outside of Christ. Are you there? The moment he, by an act of his authority, included us in Christ Jesus, all your experiences will be factored within that ecosystem. Think about it. Oh my. When the spirit of deception comes into the body of Christ, what he does is that he attempts to separate you from Christ so that you, you see yourself apart from Christ. Oh, you are not following. You see yourself apart from Christ. Then you begin to try to become apart from Christ and all the symptoms of your insufficiency will show off again. And in that state, Satan can defeat you. So when we begin a campaign for restoration, and unfortunately there's no way we can pioneer this campaign without revealing what falsehood is 
Unfortunately. Unfortunately. So that's why I'm the most attacked preacher on the continent. Because when we uh, campaign for restoration, we show you clearly what falsehood looks like. And a lot of people have been fed from falsehood. They have survived on falsehood. They are fat from falsehood. So when God brings a prophet from the wilderness to show the body of Christ, Hey! We are called unto glory. It affects the system, the structure that has been built on the uh, taking advantage of people and, and, and abusing people. So you become a, an object of attack. But those attacks, are, are, they are privileges that God has given me to walk in higher dimensions of his glory. <laughs> Come in and see me. For me, I'm going to be of criticisms. People will wake up in the night and find ventilation in attacking me. It's part of, you are, you are, you, are you following? Oh my, you are not, you are not here. That's my own kind of stuff. In fact, if people are not attacking me, I will now know that I'm backsliding because my portion, yeah, that's my portion. That's my portion. And as you align with him and fulfill his purpose for your life, there is a measure of suffering that will be mingled with your process. Meanwhile, doctrine at some point in the, in the body of Christ uh, uh, created an illusion that uh, the moment you give your life to Christ, you are off the hook. You are walking in limbo. It's an experience of paradise. Glory to God. And that's an illusion. Oh my God, you're not here. That's an illusion. And so when people come into confrontation with suffering in the line of their duty, they become confused because they were promised paradise to walk on sand. So we don't have stamina. We don't have capacity. Little pressure. We are denying Jesus Christ. The cross. Once you take it away, we become comic figures. We become like Batman. You know, Batman can fall from his 10-story building and he will just stand up. And, <laughs> and then he... <laughs> when you take the cross away, sin becomes our culture. Whenever you find any place of worship where they joke with, they don't say white is white, black is black. It means that they are not ready to paint the picture of the new creation. And in the new creation, if you check your Bible in heaven, the Bible says, no such thing that naked a lie shall appear there. It means they are not of that civilization. They are corrupted by Babylon. And it doesn't matter how you started. No, it doesn't matter. You become an agent of darkness instantly when you begin to blot out the cross. You'll be promoting what God is killing. You'll be pampering what God has judged. And if God wants to come to establish a revival of his ways, he will need to kill you because you are one with the darkness that he came to fight. Darkness knew that the last hope of the heavenly is to establish the, the reign of Jesus was on the continent of Africa. So Satan went ahead of time to build high places and name them churches. Oh, 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 oh. Now, at some point, I might lose my message. And if I do, please pardon me. I came with a well-researched presentation, but sometimes it doesn't survive. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Sometimes I want to teach, but the people cannot receive. Oh, they can't receive. They can't receive. I was taken far away from our generation into the future. I was shown the mind of God and what he wants to establish in our time. I do not say this boastfully. There's a new civilization coming into the earth. Oh, 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 oh. If you know how many meetings I cancel to come here, because I don't respond to invitations, not, no. I go where, meanwhile there are invitations that if I go for, I earn 5,000 US dollars. I've never been there. And when I go where I go, I'm not going because there's any hope that I will go back with anything. Because the moment is about what you can get, you are no longer for Christ. You have been corrupted by what the Bible calls the doctrine of Balaam. Oh, 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 oh,
I was long in the wilderness. I stayed long there. The most iconic miracles God wrought through my hands, they are not on tape, they are not on video. I did not even preach with a microphone. Because it's not a show. Man must not be on the top of the pyramid. There are many nations today that have removed God from their civilization. What they have created is a pyramid that man is at the top. So you will need to revise Webster's Dictionary. Because there are many definitions in Webster's Dictionary that, that have changed because of that pyramid where man is. You need to get another dictionary that defines marriage. Because Webster defined it some time ago. Uh, are you seeing it? That's Babylon. Uh, those are the things when you have a people that do not understand the divine order. They just hold the microphone and talk. You build that kind of nonsense. And the souls of men will be trapped in it. I love him. Uh, that's why God raises people like Elijah. Mm. It took 22 years for him to invest the spirit of Elijah. 22 years. Where one man can stand against the perversion of a nation. That's what I was called to do. Oh, 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 oh. If there is no darkness, there will be no need for Elijah. And uh, the Elijah spirit is a, it's an apostolic technology. He brought it out of the laboratory again in the days of John the Baptist. He has brought it again. You know, a lot of people are not used to it. Because what we are used to is compromise. You accept seeing a little, you know. We can now, you know. That's Babylon. Oh. Somebody, a minister is in immorality and he's still standing on the pulpit because this is his job. <laughs> yeah, this is his job. He's the king here. And as long as it remains king, Jesus is not available. I was on the pulpit. I was right with him, and he he led me away from the pulpit. That was where I lost my pastoral touch. I pastored and I loved it. I saw people grow from obscurity too. Be became princes of power. We were managing a revival. He said, "Leave the pulpit." So I left. He said, "The reason why I asked you to leave is so that I can wash your eyes with eye salve, so that you can see." took 11 years and I began to see the body of Christ in bondage Babylon had colonized us her doctrine was perverted the doctrine of demons had replaced the doctrine of Christ yeah. people don't know what it means again to experience God in a meeting like this I know you touched something while we travel you, you, there was something in the spirit yeah. how many of you touched it uh, when, when you, you know it you know it you don't know his name but you know how it feels inside that's the same kind of harmony that was found in Eden. Where humanity and divinity were fused together. Now that is only obtainable in Christ Jesus. When we make him king, then he manifests his presence. The cross. That's why we have the experiences that are not palatable. But they were approved of God to deal with our trust in ourselves. When he has killed that trust, then you'll be willing to yield. Then he shows you the power of his resurrection. From that, from your ashes of dying, he causes you to arise. Yes, he, he, oh my God. I was gifted intellectually, very, very gifted. And I wanted to be a lecturer. Part of the reasons why I wanted to be a lecturer was because I wanted to come and give notes without many notebook. And I had a mental capacity to do that, to, to, to cram the textbook. I called my mates. I said, you guys are cursed. You study all night and you can't retain anything. I was the proudest man on the planet until he began to administer <laughs> his cross. I don't want to tell you how, how many deaths have died. There's no one living in the flesh that can serve the will of God. You, you are the one that provoked me to, to be saying all these things. 
I was detained by God for one decade so that he could kill pride. I believe he's not completely dead yet, but he's not big enough to obstruct Jesus Christ. <laughs> it was when that death was administered that he came and said, yes, now I will make you my spokesman. The power of his resurrection. He began to draw me from off the ashes. I had nothing to trust anymore but Jesus. A time came, he came to me and said, I'm going to give you a voice that the nations will hear. You need to see the boy that he was talking about. Because after that death process was administered, there was nothing that I, that I could sell. That is, it, nothing. You might be in the process of that death now and you are fighting it. But there is none in the kingdom that he loves that he does not chastise. We, we know we don't know about chastening again. And that's why when someone is going through the protocol, the process, he believes there's something wrong because we're not taught that that's how he administers his kingdom upon the hearts of men. From those ashes, he began to raise me up. My wife knows me. He knows. He knows me. There's only one loss I have from the time she met me till now. Jesus, don't stand in the way of Jesus because I'll leave you behind. I'll leave you behind. He knows. She's so all those years and she saw how God dealt with the man and then began to raise me up by the power of his resurrection that is when my stammering was healed by the power of his resurrection he made me find utterance in the spirit by the power of his resurrection that power can make anything out of you mm. 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 so your estimation of yourself is still within the context of your mental capacity you, you are late some of us have gone beyond that level. Now we fly on the wings of grace, which is a commodity that the earth can never produce. So why men think that, okay, he should be discouraged. They see you flying so high. And they, that's what it means to be supernatural. Human beings can understand how you can live this life. And you can live this life because you have given the Holy Spirit the opportunity of expression. But that will not come before. It will come after delays. So there are many of you here that he has been dealing with in the, in the secret place, causing you to pledge your allegiance to a different flag and to dance to the beat of a different drummer. I danced to that beat until it became the only beat I know. And any time the beat of Christ is not in a place, it, you won't find me there. It doesn't matter whether I will get 5,000 USD from the process of enduring death. My covenant is not with death. So if you take the cross away, then our faith, the Bible says, is vain. We become a cult. We become a customer care cult. Our ministry will be a ministry of customer care, marketing and management. And that's how ministry looks like these days. But the spirit of Elijah awakens on the continent of Africa to be a witness of his resurrection. John said that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which we have handled. When you hear someone that has not handled stuff, you will know it's, it's light. It's noisy. Causes soulish commotions. Oh my. I believe in prayer. I'm a creature of prayer. How a feeble man like this will, will cry. And people from all over the world will hear his voice. There's no training for it other than the altar. That's where voices are given. That's where powers are given. That's where princes are made. Oh, Shaiko Bemi. It's Kovila Mo Maye. Oh, Kaite Muhevi Zigalantoma. Karabos Kaitamina. Is Kobe Bela Huske Tamina Korea. You can kill every man in the room, you can't kill the prayer man. The spirit he prays to will resist, will resist your hand. It's not everybody that died through COVID, not everybody will die by a bomb blast. Not everybody will die by the hand of a terrorist. Some men have some things that are invincible. Collocated around their life to ensure that the sun doesn't smite them by day, nor the moon by night. A new season comes upon the continent. And one of the features of this season is that God is going to raise lionesses among women. Yes. 
the church has been crippled because we have not recognized the capacity of the lioness. We've been walking on crutches, trying to survive. Once you know the principle of submission, he will crown you with the roar of a lion. No, 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 no. Yes, a lion. If something becomes so terrible, so hot, a situation becomes so tough, I just tell my wife, gather those your women, gather them. <laughs> when they finish, even death itself will turn backward. <laughs> we are indestructible. Nothing can put us down. We pray to the God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. He will not suffer your foot to be moved. He that keep it. Israel never sleeps nor slumber. Thank you for watching. Do well to subscribe, like, share the video to your loved ones so they can receive what God is doing from this platform. You can also follow us on all our social media platforms. We are on Instagram, we are on Facebook, and we are on Twitter. Thank you.